Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be reviewing this here, the Creality Ender 3 S1 3D printer. Let's go. Okay, so I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this review. The first video got over 5,000 views in the first month, which for my channel is really good. So thank you for everyone that tuned in to that. If you watched my reviews before, you'll know that I like to dig into some of the areas that other YouTubers don't always go and comment basically on what the printer doesn't do as well because I feel like as a buyer that's what you want to know. But, got to be honest with you, I have been quite impressed with this printer. Does that mean this review is going to be boring and I'll have nothing to say? No. Like everything, nothing is perfect and there's still plenty that this printer could do better. But, I like to start with the positives and cover the things that I think it has done well, that Creality have done well. And the first thing I wanted to touch on that I am really impressed with is how quiet this machine is. It's running at the moment, um, well, it's on at the moment, and all you can hear is fan noise when you start printing. That's still pretty much all you can hear. If you whack the speed up really high, then you start to hear a little bit more noise, but it's mechanical. Um, generally speaking, this is a pretty quiet printer, and if you are someone that is very noise adverse, then I don't think you'd be disappointed with the sound levels coming out of this printer. Trust me, I've got much, much worse. The second thing I wanted to compliment on this printer is the touch probe that Creality have. Uh, it's called the CR Touch Probe, Creality branded standard sort of thing. It's a copy of a BR Touch, but they've made it more robust, it's sturdier, it looks sturdier, and for me, that helps. The probe itself is metal, which is great because I've had a lot of VR Touch probes that have been made from plastic and they have snapped. Not the greatest design. So, impressed with the upgraded Touch probe. Obviously, again, the downside of a plastic probe with the VR Touch is that if it does get slightly bent, then the distance of that probe is going to be reduced and that can affect your levelling. Obviously, with a metal one, you're much less likely to have that probe bend. The next thing I wanted to compliment on this printer is some of the attention to detail, specifically the wear resistant parts. You'll see here where the filament runs in at the top of the filament sensor, it has a metal ring around it. That's brilliant because whenever you have filament rubbing along plastic, it slowly wears down and eventually you end up with a big gaping hole and that can affect the, the likelihood of that part even working. Again, down here in the entrance to the extruder, we've got that metal reinforcement, which again, makes sure that the entrance to this extruder isn't going to wear away from the constant filament moving through it. Might not seem like much plastic rubbing against plastic, you might not think there's going to be much wear, but you've got to remember, even one of these 1kg rolls is 330 meters of filament if you're using 1.75, so you can put some serious tracks against the plastic parts and they do wear down. And if you're a high volume printer, you will notice that very quickly. Again, in terms of wear resistance, you've got really good cable management. The bed is supported with one of the sturdiest uh, cable supports I've ever seen on a printer with a moving bed. We've also got this nice braided cable that clips into the top of the printer, the print head, uh, and that's very good. So all in all, from wear resistant parts, very impressed. The general mechanics and movements of this printer work really well. I actually was using this printer to start with, with one of the Z-axis stepper motors unplugged and it didn't affect performance in the slightest, so that just shows how well constrained uh, some of the movement is in this machine. Need proof? Here's a three-day print using the full build volume. Again, I touched on this, but the cable management is really good, they're nice and neat, and they're well supported where necessary. I also want to compliment this new style of extrusion where some of the faces are completely closed off again here. The old Creality machines just use standard 2020 or 3030 extrusion bars and it had openings and those openings over time would just get full of dust, of fluff, of bits of filament and it was a mess. Whereas this generally stays much cleaner and you can just brush off any of the little bits of filament ends that gets left around. Another thing that works well is the screen dimming. Again, a feature that makes this printer really nice to have in the background and doesn't cause too much disturbance. And the last thing I wanted to compliment about this printer is the new Sprite extruder. It's light, moves well, 
It supplies a good degree of force to the filament, not had any problems getting a range of filaments to extrude from this printer. It heats up very quickly, the gearing motor is exposed, you can see that it's moving fine and you can also manually turn it when not engaged to, to move the filament in, like so. Or you can push the lever, move the filament in. Very quick and easy to change filament, you just push the lever, push the filament down, pull it out, and there we go, it's done. Obviously because this is direct drive, there's no long tubes to pull it through, it's very quick and easy. So all in all, my experience with this printer has been very positive. But, like I say to you, and why you're probably here, is because you want to know what I think this printer doesn't do as well. So, what are the downsides of the Creality Ender 3 S1? I'll tell you now. Firstly, the bed surface. You'll see here, it's already been damaged where it tears away. It's obviously really disappointing when something like this happens because then it means that you no longer have the full usable area of the bed if you want to get nice prints without using a raft or something, if that would even work, printing over such a defect. I really hate this sort of thing where you've got not single use, but really throwaway parts. It's just a shame because the, the spring steel side of things works really well. And I would have personally liked to see Creality opt for a more harder wearing bed surface. Um, I personally use 3D lacquer bed adhesive, I have no problem using adhesives, I know some people don't like to uh, use them, but in my book an adhesive is much better than a bed surface that lasts 10 goes and then you've got a rip. The other thing that annoys me with these bed surfaces is even when you're using them, if you do have an area of the bed which is slightly bold, so it isn't covered by the, the levelling, then you can end up with bits gouged into the bed or you can end up with filament actually stuck into the bed that it's really hard to get out and then the only way it comes out is on your next print which is always going to be a different colour uh, so you end up with white bits in your black prints and black bits in your white prints. Bed surface, not overjoyed with and I will probably at some point whack a glass bed on this and revert to my normal use case of glass plus 3D lac. That said, credit where credit's due, the magnet on this bed is really good and spring steel design is again really good, it allows you to remove prints quickly, but if the surface doesn't work then what can you do? That said, I've just had a quick idea while actually looking at this, is that at some point I may just rip off this top surface, sand the bed and print directly on the spring steel. If you'd like to see me do that, let me know and I'll make another video on it. The second thing I wanted to moan about is this fan. It's one directional which naturally means that cooling is far greater on one side than the other. That makes it really difficult to calibrate overhangs and things like that on parts that have overhangs in both directions. Whenever you have a fan pointing only from one side, naturally you get cooling better on one side than the other, and what that basically means is your overhang performance on one side is actually quite bad, and the overhang performance of a printer is only as good as the overhang performance on the worst side. So if you've got no cooling coming from that one side, the overhang performance isn't very good. So that's a shame. I think with the amount of effort that's gone into redesigning this extruder, they definitely could have come up with, at the very least, a fan shroud that enabled flow to circulate around the nozzle. And it's probably an upgrade that would benefit this machine greatly. The third thing I wanted to talk about in terms of the, the downsides of this printer is that it's very buggy. But I appreciate that I was one of the first cohort of buyers for this printer and as such it's one of the very early firmwares. I haven't yet updated it because I wanted to test it out of the box as I always like to and I suspect that with a firmware update which is meant to be quite easy then most of those bugs, software bugs at least, would fix themselves. The final thing I wanted to say about which I was really quite shocked about was just how bad the PID tuning or the temperature controlling was on this printer out of the box. If I set this hot end to 230 degrees C, I end up seeing fluctuations between 220 degrees C and 240 degrees C like this when the print is going. That, for a printer out of the box where I've changed nothing, is pretty damn awful and it's actually meant that on many occasions the printer won't even start because it can't 
set itself to the right temperature. Not only that, but it results in these banding artifacts up and down prints. And at the end of the day, I like to review a printer based on if you've never printed before and this is the first printer you'd ever got and it was doing that, you might not have any idea why it's doing that. And so that's really disappointing. It's the worst out of the box temperature controlling I have ever seen on a 3D printer. So I was quite surprised at that. So I would highly recommend doing some PID tuning on this printer if you get it. Generally speaking, this printer has been an absolute breeze to use. I've had success printing PLA, PTG, and TPU, a flexible material, straight out of the box. Actually, the TPU performance on this printer is fantastic. I had no clogs, even with a 92A sure material on a, a 20 hour long uh, flexible print. So if you are looking to print flexible materials, this is really good. It's very easy to use. The leveling works well. Personally for me, on a bed this small, I think it's pointless to have the, the multi-touch probing. And so I just manually level it uh, and use the G28, which is a single probe in the middle of the printer. I'll start a print now, just so you can get an idea. So I started it, click print. Anyway, while that's starting, would I recommend this printer? To be honest, yes, I would, hands down. It is a fantastic printer for the price point. You might look at it and think it's got too expensive, it's got too small, but if you've never printed before, you're probably going to be quite happy with the results from this printer. Especially since I'm aware that Creality very often when they release their first round of prints has a few teething issues and they're very responsive and very quick to sort these out. So if you're ordering this printer now, I imagine particularly the bugs will already be handled because the firmware will have been updated. But if you've got extra change burning a hole in your pocket, I still don't think this printer does quite enough to knock the Prusa Mark III off its well-coveted pedestal. Here's one of the example bugs I was talking about earlier. I clicked print, it started, but it's not doing anything. Um, if I knock the temperature down, it then starts. I've just found that by trial and error, but again, you might be a bit confused why it's not starting. But you can see, in just a few clicks, you really can get this printer going, and it does have very consistent, very good, reliable results, and I've been impressed with it. Works great with 3D Tomorrow material, so if you're in the UK, that's something you could consider for your machine. But obviously, full disclosure, that is my brand. But it does mean I'm even more likely to want to help you if you get stuck. I know a number of you were waiting to share your feedback on the printer and see if it lines up with mine. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you in the comments down below. And anyway, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video, this review video. It's quite a short one because it is quite a good machine and I do like to dig down on what the printers don't do so well and there isn't as much that I can talk about this time. It's a great machine. It ticks a lot of the boxes that I know a lot of people will be after. Quiet printing, reliability, longevity with the improved hardware and really I think Creality have to be commended for an excellent release at still a very reasonable price point. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers! Okay, so.